welcome to our Room of Shadows. I'm Tom. I'm Galen. And these are your 15 minutes of fume. Thunder, thunder, thunder. Thundercats, ho, ha, ha. I'm in a good mood. I slept really well last night. How about you? I did sleep well last night. No reason, no real reason one can think of, no historical reasons. Nothing happened yesterday, right? <sighs> Nothing cool? We're just, you know. Oh, wait. Getting back to the business of our lives, which involves sniffing perfumes, living life, being very good. Wearing big hats. Oh. Oh, you noticed. Now that you mention it, we are wearing big hats. They barely um, fit in the frame, huh? We have very big hats to fill because today we are reviewing perfumes created in collaboration between Black Phoenix Alchemy Lab, gothic perfumer extraordinaire, and the wonderful, captivating gothic lifestyle site slash general store slash inspiration station, Haute Macabre. So, uh, our recent collaboration is called In the Shadow Room. Ooh. Now, these perfumes are exclusively available through Hope Macabre, and they do their releases differently than we do at our humble little site. Uh, they tend to do uh, pre-orders and releases, you know, in waves where you have a chance to get it for a while, and then you don't. Mm -hmm. Will it come back? I mean, probably. Will you yeah. live that long? Probably, but I hope so. Who can be certain, especially in these increasingly uncertain times? We didn't actually get to smell this when it was first debuted. It took a while, uh, partly because I think when it was released, uh, everything that we made was shipped off to Hope Macabre, and we little perfume grubbers over here on this side were just like left with our noses pressed against the glass. And then we had it for a while, but we didn't get around to sniffing it. Today we will remedy that unfortunate situation. Uh, the scent in the shadow room, the description says, <clears throat> Sam voice, I spent a season in a red room, a rich deep glowing red where the shadows glistened as if they were soaked with wine. I'm just imagining this being delivered like uh, like from a stranger on a park bench, you know. A seat? You spent a whole season in a red room? That's a really like fantastically ominous <laughs> these things happen to Caption. a person that actually uh my friend uh rosalyn who is a brilliant performer in new york city spontaneously painted all of her bedroom walls red and then moved her bed into the center of it and was like this is her new bold statement about like embracing sensuality in her life and all this stuff was the bed on the floor the bed was not on the floor oh okay it was like a four poster full fantasy either way still like yeah intense and then i wound up house surfing there for a while and slept in that room and it was very strange to wake up in the middle of the room surrounded by four red walls so i i relate i understand one morning there were ants red ants in the room blended right into the walls yes uh they the did walls and were actually just red ants my was... friend uh uh dave moon who's apartment it was who'd lived there on the upper west side for decades i went out and i was like oh just so you know there are ants in the room and he was like, oh, are there? I'm like, yeah, thinking he might want to do something about it. And then he was like, they'll most likely move on. It's like an old Upper West Side building on Central Park West. And the ants just kind of move from place to place. And sure enough, I thought this was insane. But then, like, I went back, like, 12 hours later, and it was as if no ants had ever been there. Damn. So anything is possible in a red room. Those of you with red rooms at home, you know what we're talking about. I'm thinking we should make our own red room. Which room should be the red room? The bathroom? I don't know. The hallway. <laughs> Ooh, I love a red hallway. Red hallway. You're all going to try to make something dirty out of that in the comments, but... Uh, oh, shit. I didn't mean... Do your worst. Anyway, Cut the that. scent. But back to the scent. Okay. I love how we're like uh, able to lollygag a really little bit today. Really got lost in that red room. Are we still in there? <laughs> We've never left the, the red room. Is this the shadow room? <laughs> the scent is inky black pomegranate, black currant, Cassis, Cassis, Cassis. My Midwestern relatives would insist Cassis? that it is Cassis. Cassis. 
uh, red sandalwood, ambrette seed, and fossilized amber, pink peppercorn, Beth, and a uh, geik wood, geik wood, G U I A I C wood. G U I wood. It used to, that's what Hollywood used to be called. And then um, they were know, like, we have to like, it has to be easier. It, it kept getting one of those like little red crinkly underscores. Uh, in the spell check. Yeah, and they had to change it to Hollywood and Land like, and then Hollywood. Looks like you're misspelling this word. So, um, we're going to smell this perfume. Oh, okay. And then creepy things are going to happen to us. We're going to be in the red room. I got to say, just from the notes, this is a, a pretty big departure from most of the Hope Macabre blends because just because of the fruitiness of it, we've never seen this before. That's true. This is a... I like that Hope Macabre is just branching out and finding new ways to be creepy and fruity in the, in the new new year. So right off the bottle, there's it like is this creepy and fruity, though. steam of pomegranate, like, rising up. Ew. Steam of pomegranate. It is. It is like a... Steaming pomegranate. Yes. Like Why an, are they steaming? Like an evil, poisoned, hot pomegranate. Which, you know... Surely there's a fairy tale about that somewhere in uh, Germanic history. Okay, and then I am detecting a bit of the uh, cassis. cassis. Are you, you don't even know what it is. I do, I do. It oh. is a, like a red currant, oh. isn't it? I've had creme, creme de cassis, which is a red liqueur made from... Oh, it's from black currants. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did I misspeak? Did I get swept away in the color story of the scent and then say the wrong color of currant? Let's put it on. Okay. Because uh, the, some of these fruit notes in the bottle especially, I mean, they're so bombastic and uh, they, you know, have a s overlap in their scent palette. And I think on the skin we'll discover some more of the subtlety of these other notes. Because I want to smell the peppercorn. I want to smell whatever this wood is. So, Gayak wood is uh, apparently a bit like a kind of a, it's known to have a birch tar scent. Kind of like, you know, it's like a woody resinous goo that a, tr a tree makes the heartwood of a palo santo yes oh so i'm getting um on the skin uh this is uh really nice and complex um there is this kind of like ominous tartness which is of course <laughs> it what is a great screen name <laughs> ominous tartness it's like a star wars name more than anything <laughs> yeah there is something um faintly woody in it and it, it definitely pulls it out of the realm of like straight like fruit salad you know what i'm saying which yeah i know like a really fruity blend that's the risk you put a bunch of fruit in there together and then suddenly you are like you know a tupperware full of fruit salad like the amber is pulling it like out of the edible uh the woody note is pulling it out of the edible it does have like a hint of spice to it. Yeah, the peppercorn adds like a bit of a sting. But it has this big, rich, red, throbbing sort of like steaming, steaming central core. That is just what the scent is all about. And if you don't like it, then you shouldn't have walked into a red room where the door can slam behind you and not open for 60 days. A whole season. You're going to be stuck there for a season. A season. Smelling this really reminds me, this is a weird association to pull. Um, the main thing that I get immediately from this is burlesque. This reminds me of that makes sense. a scent that uh, like a burlesque performer would wear. Would omit. Most burlesque performers do not smell terribly great because they're covered in makeup and wigs and uh, the burlesque scent of... Sweat dollar bills gathered from the audience which is would i would i'm not saying that's a scent i wouldn't wear but that's not what this smells like this is this smell in the shadow room is like the the, the smell of like the glamorous aspect of burlesque yeah you know the actual smell of the the striptease and the uh the sort of carnal energy of it so like this is what you would expect like what you would hope that like the backstage room at a burlesque show would smell like Having hosted many burlesque shows in the East Village, I can inform you that that is a fantasy. But uh, now you can have the fantasy. And honestly, I would love to send this to some burlesque people I know, and oh, I just remembered that every event is canceled. Burlesquers are stripping on the internet. 
or they're doing something else. Well, they could put it on while they're doing that. <laughs> it's not going to, like, like... You uh, can't smell, but oh, my. I mean, it's certainly... I see this... I mean, it's a really sensual, lusty... Um, and I would say, like, I'm not saying it's not, it's minimally spooky, you know? It's not that it's not there or it can't be incorporated or worn in a spooky way. Like, there's nothing like a ripe red scent with an all-black outfit, for example, to really leave people, you know, wondering what your secret is. And as this is drying down, I'm definitely getting, uh, the pink peppercorn. So it's like, I like how, like, the red is kind of, like, bleeding at the edges, like, to pink, you know? So it's, like, soft. And it does have like depth and a bit of a bite, but like soft red voluptuous gorgeousness. So like, I love how this scent was apparently born out of this like frightening yellow wallpaper, but make it red style madness. <laughs> uh, I would eventually hope that we would get through the entire color spectrum of wallpaper, you know, stories. Everyone will be a little different in its own way. We should all be writing those now, because they're all in the yellow wallpaper now. Yeah. Huh. I'm, you know, I'd love to get to lavender wallpaper. It's moving around. The snozberries taste like snozberries. I hear a leaf blower. And that's not just like an association from the scent, like, oh, ah, I can hear the leaf kumbaya, blower. Kumbaya, my love. Can you hear it? <laughs> when Hope Macabre makes uh, In the Shadow Room available again, we will be shouting it from the rooftops, and then you'll be able to reference back this video and decide that you want some and that you will have it. Because right now I don't believe it is available, but I think they're gonna do another run of it coming up very soon. Uh, that's all the information I have. However, we have a second surprise perfume to review today, mm -hmm. which is Avum. A-E-V-U-M, and this is a gift imp that Hope Macabre is popping into every order over $25 right now, which would include, for example, a perfume, uh, and it is while supplies last, because I don't know how many of these we sent to them, but just so you know, at Hope Macabre, you can buy tarot decks, you can buy crystals, you can buy pendulum, pendulum, pen, pendula, uh, pendulae, did you say books? Books, uh, all manner of things for, uh, ceremonial magic or just like looking like somebody who does serial ceremonial magic those are two different skills they do overlap uh so anyway there's lots to have over there that you might treasure forever um but this evum perfume blend is one that we've made for them a while back that resurfaces from time to time as a gift imp and the scent of evum is it says the state between the timelessness of the gods and the existence of the mortal. An improper eternity. Oh. I know a thing or two about an improper I eternity. I was just going to say. Um, you're singing my song. Started in March. The scent notes are 13-year-aged patchouli, in incense smoke, burgundy tar oud, teak wood, and scorched driftwood, and clove. Oh, wow. Okay, so, I am excited. It's, it sounds, sounds like it's going to be really intense. You know what I'm saying? A lot of perfect. bombastic notes here. And I think it might, because of the burgundy tar oud, uh, well, I'll spell it in the bottle first, it might really go well with the the vavoom room. Oh. Whoa. Okay, in the bottle. Patchouli and oud, for sure. Just like snaking out it's like a pandora's box situation where you crack the lid and it's just like they all start slithering out to corrupt you know the human world uh that yeah the teak wood also it's like there's like a, a it's not super burned scorched overall that's just one little note um but it definitely has a dry scratchy resinous like it definitely has profane intentions and then we're gonna smell it on the skin and see how those manifest in our lowly human world. Ooh. Oh my god. On the skin, I'm getting the clove. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of like in there, fogging up the windshield. Wow. <sighs> really dry. It is really dry. Really and dry and rich. woody. Yeah. And smoke, it, yeah, I'm mostly getting like the patchouli and the smoke and the clove, but there is a definite dry woodiness to it. It's really like gorgeous. The base of all of it. Yeah. 
For some reason, this is reminding me of the Salton Sea and Bombay Beach and, like, the place where the land is scorched and nothing can grow, but is still, like, weirdly peaceful and comforting to those of us who find comfort in, you know, blasted places. That's my association with this. Like, you can smell the wood. And I know that that sounds really literal because I'm smelling an oil that was derived from the wood, but it's really conjuring mental associations of, like, things you can actually touch. Like, whatever happened here, it's not good. <sighs> they should have listened. Which is funny because now I go back to the Shadow Room scent, and in contrast to this one, it's very sweet. So in case I didn't mention that before, with all of the fruit, the fruit talk, um, these are sweet fruits, but they do harmonize very nicely. It's like suddenly the shadow room seems very comfortable and maybe another season there wouldn't be so bad because the other place has no shelter. I wish this was available as a full sizer. I know that's the first thing that everyone says when they get like some incredible gift imp in the mail is like, why can't I buy this? And that's what makes it special. I'm sorry, but it's just part of the, you know, exclusive, now you see it, now you don't, uh, liminal, shadowy, goth retailer experience. If you had it all the time, you wouldn't respect it as much. We have a zillion wonderful general catalog perfumes of our own that will test testify to that, you know. So, enjoy your evum while you can get it. Ah, I gotta get your hands on this. Go get it, because like, yeah, go get it. Why not? Go get it. It's worth that. What are you doing right now? Go get it. Yeah. Just go get it. Making a video right now. I can't. Go. Oh. Get it. We have it. We don't we need it. to go get it. That's fine. But we could get another one. Do you have any parting comments, concerns, questions? Um, I haven't smelled this one in a while. Dissertations? Subpoenas? I think they're uh, both just really wonderfully atmospheric in completely different ways. I mean, um, I just love a scent that is a place. I love a scent yeah. that is a place. Put it on my tombstone. I love a scent that is a place. All right, I, I, I'll do that. Did you hear something? Yeah. There was like a creak. The shadow in the shadow room. Well, there goes tonight's sleep. The shadow in the shadow room. Yikes. So um, those are the scents. Uh, we won't waffle away any more of your time. We'll be reviewing more perfumes soon. Hand to God. Um, you look alarmed. Like I... Hand to God. I committed Whoa. you to something that you... You Whoa. knew it was going to happen. Hand to God. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. What the hell else are we going to do? I don't know. Also, are we just going to smell perfumes and not make a video about it? That seems selfish at this point. We do that a lot, though. So, hotemacabre.com, the link obviously will be in the uh, caption thingy for this video. Um, we wish you a pleasant stay in your very own shadow room, whatever the color may be. Maybe think about opening the curtains. Just let a little light in there so you yeah. don't, like, trip on something. Maybe go play outside for just, like, ten minutes. Make sure it's not covered in ants. Oh! Uh, one time I had an ant infestation in a VCR. <laughs> okay! Horrifying. And on that note, I, I think, think we should end. We found our ending. Have a great day, y'all. Bye!